You guys already know what you're in for. You already know what this horoscope is going to be about. Uh, I would say welcome back to your favorite weekly horoscope, but let's just get straight to the chase. Big week this week, guys. Uh, this is not a small week. What if I just opened up and I was like, this is a small week, not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Um, There's really a lot to talk about. Um, Let's just go ahead and jump straight really into it. Let's look at the highlights. Highlights this week. So I actually wanted to point out specifically all of these little things. Um. Because it's not just this triple, yes, it's a triple conjunction, and triple conjunctions are pretty important, but um, it's Mars conjoining Uranus, it's Mars conjoining Rahu, the North Node. If you're not familiar, the North Node is called Rahu in like Vedic terms, and K2 is the South Node, and you guys should be able to know that one by now. Um, Mars conjoins Uranus, Mars conjoins Rahu, Rahu conjoins Uranus, which is actually something that happened on Sunday. I'm technically recording this on Friday, so I'm referring to the future in the past. Um, anyway, Rahu conjoins Uranus. So that's three huge things. They're not subtle. And you know what's funny is, you know, it's not like Venus conjoining Jupiter conjoining Saturn. Like, that's a triple conjunction. But those, all of those planets, you know, the word, how do I put this? Everything in astrology is very specific, right? Like a triple conjunction, three planets coming together. That happens, but... It's really crazy that it's the three like most wild planets. Like Uranus is probably the most wild planet. Rahu is considered like one of the craziest things. And Mars is, you know, Mars. Anyway, we're going to be talking about that because that happens on Monday. So I'll, I'll, I'll go into that here in just a second. But Venus sextiles Mars too, which I really think is going to be alleviating a lot more of this uh, transit than I think we're anticipating. So I'm actually really excited for Venus sextile Mars. Mercury enters Virgo. That's going to be really nice. There's something to look forward to this week as Mercury enters Virgo. Well, let me actually rephrase that because this Mars Uranus North Node conjunction, while it could be bad, there's a lot of positives to it, and we're going to get to that. But Mars squares Saturn, that is probably what's going to be harder. It's not necessarily like, for example, like let's say you're driving your car and um, you break down, your car randomly breaks down. That, and let's say like, you have the money to fix it, fixing it's not a problem, but let's say you're stuck in the desert. Like, that's the problem. It's like where you broke down. And that's very Mars square Saturn. Like it may not be the disruption that gets you, but it's the delay that's going to get you. And we'll talk about that. Uh, and Venus trines Neptune. So at least we can be a little delusional this week and enjoy our fantasies. And, um, you know, we don't have to live in reality if we don't want to. I mean, who is living in reality anymore these days? So anyway, let's just go ahead and start talking about Monday. So Monday, I've been prepping you guys on this forever. I talked about it. I've talked about this at nauseum. Like, I cannot believe. So being an astrologer is funny because you talk about like every single day, like multiple times. Mars conjoins Uranus. North Node conjoins Uranus. Mars conjoins the North Node. And the moon enters Libra. So where to really begin with this? Let's pull up the chart. I think number one is, again, and I prefaced with this last week, like, you know, I'm not, I don't try to be like a, a doom and gloom person. Um, I think it's really easy to be doom and gloom nowadays, just at the state of the world and the people that are in charge of everything. Um, nothing makes sense anymore. And they would rather gaslight you and lie to you about what's going on. Like they just changed the definition of a recession. How can we be in a recession if they change the definition of it? Um, it's, it's literally like borderline abusive at this point. Cause this is like what abusers do. Domestic abusers. They like manipulate you and change you and gaslight you anyway. So you want to be have some type of uh, uh, preparation. If you don't have some type of preparation for an emergency event, you're you're dumb. Like, you shouldn't have to rely on a scary astrology transit for that, right? And I just want to make sure you guys might have something. I think at the worst case scenario, I said this in my last, um, in my year ahead horoscope, like my world predictions are, if there was a day a nuclear bomb would go off, it would be this day. I don't think we're going out into full out nuclear war or anything like that. Um, but this is this is not a subtle transit. Um, I would expect it to be quite explosive. So there's that part of it. But let's bring this into the personal development uh, self stuff. I have I, I've done a lot of personal development work in my life. I've, I've done through a, a couple of personal development seminars, quite a few actually. And um, while I don't necessarily agree with all of their teachings, the thing I really want to focus on on this Mars Uranus North Node conjunction is this one that I did. This one that I did, it was like 90 days long and uh, it was called PLD. Some of you, if you're, if you're familiar with Psy seminars, some of you might be familiar with them. Um, I don't want to associate like me, like representing them. I'm not, but I did take um, their, their uh, courses and I did do PLD. PLD was a, 
a 90 day course. It was, it was called pace setters, leadership dynamics. And what the whole thing was, was like, you get goals. Uh, you set goals. You set like a personal goal, a fun goal, uh, and a business goal or something like that. And you and like about like 25 other people have to, have to hit your goals. Like, it's not like a, Oh, you try, like you do hit your goals. But in that process, there are a lot, I mean, like when you're working with 25 other people and they're like, and you're hitting and you're trying to go after like a really big goal, all of your fears come up, all of your programs come up. And it's a, it was a really intense experience. But one of the things that we did was on a certain weekend, we did something, uh, we, we pretty much did to make it really clear. There was a moment where they teed us up, uh, for, um, a big event and how they teed us up was you are going like they got, they got, they gave us all boards and, uh, on these boards before we did this, we spent this whole day going over like our past trauma and we're sharing our trauma with people. I mean like real trauma, like not just like, like it was really deep and we were really teed up for this. And after we, we went into like, like we, we, we had to prep this with like 25 shitty things about us, about ourselves that we had to go over. It was really hardcore. But after that, they gave us these boards and they said, all of the trauma or any of the problems that you have had, put it on this board. And what they did was pretty much tee us up to where like, you know, for, I, I don't want to go into the personal story because it's a little too deep, but like any trauma experience you happened that, that happened to you, that holds you back, we were teed up to put it on this board. And then we broke through that board. We punched it to break it. It was the the in, in PLD, it's called Breakthrough Weekend. And um, I would like to call this Breakthrough Week. This Mars Uranus North Node, you know, yes, things are gonna be unstable. Yes, things are gonna get out of control. Yes, there is going to be this emergency situation that really disrupts your life. Let me just be clear about that. This is a a, a bad transit, but I think it's easy to get really bad about all of the transits. But I also want you to think about this as like. What has gotten in your way for so long that you have made up a story about that your story is so strong that I, I'm going to fuck up the words here, but like pretty much like how neural programming works. It's like if you have a belief, like a, your brain like reinforces it really hardcore. So what are those beliefs that you have that have limited you so much? And I, I, I guess the thing to say here is like this is a breakthrough opportunity. What I liked about the breaking the board situation was it you had to try. And some people kind of like got, I don't want to say got injured because like no one really got injured, but like it hurt. Like, you know, for like for me, um, like I have like 12 screws in my arm. I, I broke my arm uh, motocross racing and uh, like it definitely doesn't feel good to like hit my arm or anything like that. And it hurt and there was a lot of pain. But this breakthrough for me, the way it happened for me was uh, they gave me this board and I, and they teed me up with all of my bullshit, my trauma. And I really wasn't like in the moment. Like some people were like really in it and they broke it and they, and, and they were crying and it was a mess. But for me, all I can really share is my story is I wasn't that teed up for it. Like I wasn't that into the moment, but when I broke that fucking board, I broke down, I lost it. And I want to talk about Venus and cancer for a moment. I know this is technically a Tuesday thing about Venus and cancer, but what was really magical about the breaking the board moment was when I broke that board, it felt like everything dissipated and all of the, you know, the narrative, the story that I, I had in my head about my past experiences, no longer did that stop me from going where I needed to go. And when I broke that board, I had a group of people, a team of people that literally held me while I cried. I want you to think about this Mars Uranus North Node conjunction with Venus sextiling it like that. For me, I wasn't like, and I think of it like Mars Uranus North Node too. It's very accidental, and for me, I wasn't like, I wasn't like in the moment. But it wasn't until I broke that board. It wasn't until I broke through to the other side where it fucking hit me that holy shit, I didn't realize how much that was holding me back. I didn't realize how much that that story and that narrative um, controlled me. And I had the support to, to hold that space for me. 
And I really want you to think about Monday of like, you know, maybe not everyone here, <laughs> here, not everyone watching this is going to have a, a supportive team there for you. But I look at this Mars Uranus North Node conjunction is like there is a breakthrough opportunity, but it may not be a breakthrough. It may be a breakdown, but breakdowns lead to breakthroughs. And a lot of people, because, you know, you're doing this with people from all walks of life. People didn't want to break through that board. People said no. You know, like there's so there's um this is going to be hard to explain. There, there is your victim store. There is your victim uh, experience. We are all victims of something, but then there is your victim story. And there are people that choose to remain victims by telling the narrative of their he- in their head that they are the victim of something. And that victim mindset enables them to d- do anything. The reason why you're depressed. Oh, I was victimized. Oh, the reason I can't make money. I'm a victim. Blah, 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 blah. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. And there's a way, I mean, if I talked about this, on, I, if you followed me on Twitter, I talked about this on Twitter and people got so butthurt about it. Your, your experiences of being victimized are real, but the mentality of being a victim is limiting you. Uh, you may not have a choice of what happens to you, but you do have a choice of how you respond to it. And this Mars Uranus North Node thing, a lot of people really resisted. Like people didn't want to break through that board because it challenged everything that they believed about themselves and their experience and their world. And breaking through that would mean that that would no longer be true. And they broke down. Like I saw grown adults, I mean, throwing tantrums over this, over breaking a board. And but because there was so much of their story attached to this moment, they didn't they didn't want to do it. They just resisted. And they literally had a breakdown. And then we had to coach them and be like, you got this, you can do it. And they broke the board and they had a breakthrough. And so again, I'll, yes, it's Mars, Uranus, North Node. Random shit's going to happen. Random shit's going to break. It's going to be very destabilizing. Uh, electrical grid failures, blah, 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 blah. But really though, breakdowns lead to breakthroughs. Some, I, I've talked about this guy, Wes Watson, a lot. Um, he's probably the, one of the only spiritual mentors that I actually listen to because he actually has something worthwhile of listening to. But he went to, if you don't know his story, he went to prison for like 10 years. Now he's out and really, really successful. But he talks about something that I try to iterate with my clients. You might have like your worst experience in this moment today, in a few years, might be the best thing that ever happened to you. Negativity is simply about perception and time because something that might be, again, Like for Wes Watson, the day he went to prison, he was going to get 10 years in prison. He thought that was the day his life ended, but it wasn't because he did all this work in prison and now he's out. And now that experience has now made him millions of dollars in all of this success. And now he looks back as prison was the best thing that ever happened to him. So when we're, when you're on Monday and shit hits the fan for you, I don't want you to sit there and be like, why me? Oh, the astrology is so bad. Cameron, when's the astrology going to be good? It is a breakthrough opportunity. And this is one of those things where you're going to be forced into it. Now, what I love is Venus and Cancer is right here. And there is an opportunity to, you know, have a, you know, like Mars, Uranus, North Node with like sex telling Venus, its ruler and Cancer is kind of like, like almost like a science, like a science classroom doing an experiment that might be like considered dangerous, but it's like in a safer environment for it to happen, right? Like Mars, Uranus, North Node is like, this is something very crazy and very erratic, but Venus, the ruler of this is sextiling it. It's in a safe environment. This is, this is a safe place to do this. So on Monday, and the, and the moon's going to be at the end of Virgo and it's going to enter Libra. I don't really have any thoughts about that. Moon's going to be in Virgo. Don't overthink it. Moon's going to be in Libra. Um, what does it feel like to get rid of, think, like, what, what does a breakthrough look like for you? And that breakthrough might only come through a breakdown. So let yourself break down. Let yourself, this is an unhinged moment. Like, I want you to think, do do something symbolic. Like, break a fucking board if you really have to. Put your bullshit on that board. Break, Break through it, right? You might have some emotions after that, and it might be hard, But have you guys ever had like a really hard thing happen and you cry and it's an emotional and then, and then once you're done crying, you you feel lighter, like you feel good and it's, and it's really emotionally upsetting, but you feel good about it. That's an opportunity that you have on Monday. 
So let's say nothing happens to you. Let's say no electricity goes out and you end up being fine. Uh, let yourself break through to something. Let yourself do something and don't even play it by the rules, right? This is Mars like in Taurus, like in detriment. This is not about like, this is just, this isn't about doing things the right way. It's about like Mars Uranus North Node um, is kind of like a prison break, but Mars in Taurus is like, this isn't a planned prison break. This isn't a, this is a opportunistic moment where Mars Uranus North Node is like, oh, the gate didn't close all the way. I can just go now, go, like run. Like it's kind of like when you're, if you have like dogs and you leave the door a little bit open and they just fucking eyes roll back in the, into their heads and they just go because they have the opportunity, go. I think, and I mean, this is the beginning of the month too. So it's just one of those things of, I mean, I could probably hound on this forever. And a lot of this episode is just talking about this moment, but really though, like for a lot of people, there is going to be this, un, like, for example, like the Scorpio risings, maybe this is an instability in relationships or a random relationship thing kind of occurs and happens. But I just want you to think about doing something crazy, doing something erratic. You might be forced to kind of do it. But I think this is a breakthrough opportunity. So let's just keep moving forward. On Tuesday, Venus is going to sextile. That's when Venus sextiles Mars and the moon goes opposite Jupiter. I love this. Because again, Venus sextiles Mars and there's like support. There's reception. Like people, you know, it's, this is what I fucking hate about. R regardless of what you think about the pandemic and COVID or whatever is the, these lockdowns separated us. Human beings have never been so isolated ever before in history. And there's people that want you to be isolated because then they can throw propaganda at you and then they can get you to hate your neighbors and get you to hate your family and then get you to believe whatever political narrative that they want to. And it's so important right now to really reach out to people, connect with people like Venus, Sextile, Mars and Taurus. Like who needs a hug? Really? I, 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 well, this is what's so like this wouldn't be such a big thing if like the normalization of isolating people like it's 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 really fucked up um because human beings we need socialization we need people um w w that's how we're it's how we're like you know i don't i don't want to say engineered that's not the right word it's it's just how we are and venus sex telling mars is kind of like hey you're taken care of um like you have support to do the things that you know that you need to do you know you have the support now, the hard part is actually accepting that support. If you're like me, I can, I, oh my God, get away from, like when people try to support me, all of my triggers come up, all of my bullshit comes up and I'm like, no, 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 no. I have to do everything on my own because in my head, I've made this narrative and this belief that I have to be independent because everything's on my own and blah, blah, blah. I have Saturn and Aries on K2. Um, and it's not true, right? That's what, I mean, it's it's true for me because of my because of my chart, but I, I, I bring this up because the people that you have to support you, find them. Um, and if you're like, Cameron, I don't have anyone to support me. There are strangers that will support you. Find the strangers. Um, find a support group. Like, really, something. I mean, fuck, like, uh, the people on my Patreon group, which, by the way, we moved over to Discord now. We're not on Telegram anymore. We're on Discord. So if you like Discord and you want to be part of a group chat, come over to my Patreon. Um, but they're all super supportive over there, too. It's really great what's going on over there. But like find a group of people to support you in what you're doing. And what I love about this is the moon is in Libra opposite Jupiter and Aries. And this is a really hard look. Like the moon in Libra is like, you know, your emotions are really attached to like uh, harmony, peace, relationships. And the moon going, is going opposite Jupiter and Aries. And it's kind of like, you know, Jupiter's retrograde now in Aries. This is a really big, deep thought about like the self and what you're fighting for. Why are you fighting? What are you engaging in? Where is your energy coming from? And I mean, Mars, the ruler of Jupiter right now, just conjoined Uranus in the North Node. In my opinion, on Tuesday, this is a really big emotional look at like what you just went through and did and the people that are there. I don't want to just say to support you, but the people that are there, because it's not just going to be about people just supporting you. There's going to also be people there that don't make it easy because life's not easy. Like not everyone has a supportive situation or a loving family that's going to hold their hand through everything. But, you know, you don't really have a choice. You have to deal with the people that you have. So I look at this moon in Libra opposite Jupiter and Aries, and it's really like, you know, uh, are you believing in yourself? And is that reflected in the relationships that you have around you? And as Venus sextiles Mars, I think this is a really supportive, really like affirming 
a really affirming transit. It's like you're, you're going to break through. And what was really important about these breakthroughs that we did was like after those people broke the board and they fucking fell to their knees crying, we all supported them. We all it was like a group hug moment. And it was like, hey, are you OK? Like, we're here for you. And when you have trauma experiences, your brain rewrites your beliefs. Talk to any therapist about this. Also, by the way, uh, for all the people that were on Twitter way long ago when I was there and I used to talk shit about uh, antidepressants and that uh, this pharmaceutical companies just want to get people addicted and people are like, how could you say that? You're harming people. Guess what, bitch? The science says that SSRIs don't do shit and serotonin levels have nothing to do with depression and it's about uh, life experiences. And these life experiences are so important. And it's so important if you're going to have these breakthroughs to have people around you support you because that's going to help you rewrite that belief system. So just on Tuesday, like find a way like it's it's you're, if, if you are starting on something new, if you're on a new journey, you have to find people that are going to support you that are going to like a- affirm those beliefs and care for you. Now, what care looks like might be different for everybody because self-care is not sitting on the couch. Self-care is not a doom scrolling Self-care is getting off your fucking ass and doing the thing that you know you need to do. And if you're not doing it and you regret it, that's your guideline. So let's go about Wednesday. So on Wednesday, now Wednesday's a little weird because Wednesday, the moon will square Venus, but it's going to trine Saturn. So this is where, um, again, what I was saying a minute ago. So the moon's going to square Venus. Moon and Venus are in a mutual reception, right? They're in each other's houses, but they're squaring. While some people think self-care, like for example, um, some of the best like coaches are very hard on people. Self-care is not being nice. Because let's say we set a goal and your goal is to do X, Y, and Z by a certain date. And let's say you don't hit that goal and you come to me and go, well, Cameron, um, you know, I had this thing and, uh, and you just come to me with your excuses. I could sit here and say, oh, it's okay. You know, you tried, you, you, you tried your best. It's fine. That is me enabling you to be shitty. I would be enabling you to not live up to your highest potential. That's not helping you. But you can come up to me and say, Cameron, you know, I try to get my goals, but there's this and there's that. And I could say, well, you clearly don't give a shit about what you want. And you might go, huh, what? Well, I actually care. No, you don't. If you really cared, you'd be taking the action for it. Really. And I mean, like, I... And I'm not perfect either. This is all shit I got to go through too, right? But this moon square Venus says support and care does not look like the bullshit infographics that Instagram shows you. Instagram graphics are the infographics that people share like, you know, love yourself by, you know, eating all the foods that make you feel good and, you know, sleeping in. And that's not what fucking support looks like. And this moon trine Saturn is very like, hey, the relationships in your life are going to be real with you. But it's going to square Venus. It's going to not be in your comfort zone. You might be wrong about a few things. Like that moon in Libra squaring Venus in Cancer is like, you might want to be in your comfort zone, but the relationships around you might challenge you to get out of that comfort zone. And the only way to grow is there's no stagnation in the universe. You're either decaying or you're growing. You can argue with me. I would say, I would say you can argue with me all you want, but you would just be wasting your time in the comments. Um, I'm not going to argue with it because it's just tr- universal truth. Uh, and this moon in Libra scoring Venus in Cancer is like in order to really grow, in order to really change, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Like right now, I'm learning this with, um, you know, I, I look like shit right now because I kind of let myself go over this past month. But like when it comes to working out, like you have to do progressive overload with weights. Like if you're not constantly lifting more and more weights, you're not going to grow any more muscle. It's the same thing. I, and I'm learning that right now with my business and my personal life is like I have to make bigger and bigger goals in order to grow. Otherwise, I'm not going to stagnate. I'm going to decay. And that's challenging. And that's a big challenge for me to go like, you know, where I'm at right now is I, this is where I wanted to be years ago. And I never thought I'd be here. And now it's like, wow, I have to really get out of my comfort zone and really challenge myself of what I can do and what I can be. And that's not easy, but that's what I have to do. And it's going to get me out of my comfort zone. I mean, this is me kind of just riffing about my shit, but like, look, uh, how far are we into this? 24 minutes. Okay. We're on Wednesday. The moon's going to square Venus and it's going to try and Saturn. You have a supportive group of people uh, that's, but they're not going to take your shit and don't sell them your bullshit, right? Like, fuck you for selling your bullshit to people. Like, don't give them your victim story. Don't give them your excuses. Like, own up, be responsible and and just know it's going to be hard. This is not an easy week. And I said this last winter, 
the hard transits are the times to do the hard things. This is not the e this is not the time to just kick it. Oh, it's a hard astrology. I'm just going to kick back. Now, what I will say is with the Mars Uranus North Node, like in my opinion, it's one of those things of like maybe stay home. Like, don't be like, I'm going to go rock climbing for the first time that I've never done before. If you've never been rock climbing, don't go rock climbing on Mars Uranus North Node. Like, it's just kind of like, don't be stupid, but, you know, don't just hide away from this, from this shit, right? So let's get to Thursday. So on Thursday, moon's going to enter Scorpio and uh, Mercury is going to uh, enter Virgo and the moon's going to sextile Mercury. Give me one second. I did not turn on my air conditioning and... Now I'm really hot and I need to turn it on. So here's the deal. When the moon goes into Scorpio, it's not going to feel good. When the moon, <laughs> this moon in Scorpio transit is going to be really rough, guys. Like Monday might be hard, but Thursday through like Saturday is really going to be rough. Because that moon's going to enter Scorpio and it's going to be that gut-wrenching feeling. Because day one isn't hard. So like if you ever quit smoking cigarettes, um... Day one is fucking a nightmare. Day two is a nightmare. Day three, it's about when you get to the to the point of it. And day and Thursday is like day one of no smoking. It's it's rough. You're just gonna have to deal with a rough day, just how it is. And uh, I think if you make space for the rough day, things become a lot easier. But what I do like is while the moon might go into Scorpio and you might be a little bit butt hurt and your feelings might be hurt and you might feel really insecure and you might feel really like not wanting to do it and also very like. The thing I don't like about the moon in Scorpio is so like, uh, it's just so hypersensitive. But then Mercury goes into Virgo and Mercury is logistics, Mercury is solutions, Mercury is a plan and Mercury is in its domicile and it's gonna have this awesome transit through Virgo. It'll enter shadow once it hits Neptune, but as it's in Virgo, use that Mercury energy, make a plan, stick to the plan, be clear about what you're saying, be clear about what you're doing. Mercury in Virgo is like, I've talked about this before, but language and written language comes from like people in Mesopotamia and the Sumerians, like literally keeping track of like how, like of trade. Mercury, Virgo is about like math and, and uh, literally tracking and counting things and being able to communicate that type of stuff, right? So track your progress, make a, uh, I would say track your progress for one. But what I do like is the moon is going to be sextiling Mercury. So it's kind of like, so that is really good. If you really wanted to like pop off on someone, this would be a great transit to do that. Although I don't really necessarily recommend popping off on people because oftentimes it's worse for you than it is for the other person. Because then that person just stole your energy. It's better to just ignore it and leave it alone and not give people your energy. Because um, again, I've said this a lot. Uh, energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred. And if you, have all, if you harness all this negative energy, you give it to someone, that's just taking from you. So... Uh, Mercury's going to go into Virgo. And I think a lot of things are going to become clear. Mercury's like, again, communication, um, your mindset, thinking, rationale, logistics. And I think it's really just about like, hey, the plan is starting to get clear. Uh, your ideas are starting to get clear. And I think the moon in Scorpio, sex telling Mercury is a great day to like, you know, when you're, in my opinion, when I'm like the most upset or the most hurt is when I get the most work done. So maybe this is a good time to get some work done, but... Oh, I didn't even show the chart for this. Whoops. If you want to look at the chart, look, Mercury's in Virgo, Moon's in Scorpio. Hey. Um, yeah, it's it's Thursday's a pretty emo day, but it even gets even more emo on Friday. Friday's looking tough. Friday is looking tough, guys. Um, it's going to be a tough day on Friday. I don't, I really don't know what to say besides again, sometimes there's just rough days and how, but the biggest thing is that it's not about what happens to you. It's about how you react to it. You know, I got a car crash on my birthday and I really felt my own personal growth because I got in a car crash a couple years ago and I, and, and everything I, and a couple years ago, everything I owned was in my car. I was in the middle of moving. My cat was with me and I got T-boned and I fucking lost it. I got, I, I, I beat the shit out of my car. I beat the shit out of my steering wheel. I screamed, I yelled. I was in Vegas and I was off Boulder Highway and some fucking homeless dude saw me like losing my mind and he's like, hey buddy, can I smoke, a, can I bum a smoke off you? And I fucking, I mean, I've never lost it on a guy before like that homeless guy asking me for a cigarette. And you know, that didn't do anything. That didn't solve any problems. But when I got hit the other day, um, I, I was totally cool. I was like, hey, look, are you hurt? I'm not hurt. Is anyone like else hurt? Like, are we good? 
No one was hurt. My car was still drivable. I had plans to go to Aspen. So I did. Um, and everything worked out. And I was really like, wow, I didn't get as upset as I usually would. Um, and because, it, again, it's not about what happens to you. It's about how you respond to it. Right. And so I look at this Friday day, it's like, this is a great day to work on your responses. This is a really good day to work on how you, I don't want to even say react because reacting is not, reacting doesn't put you in the, in the driver's seat. Reacting makes you a victim. Responding puts you in the driver's seat. Responding puts you in a place of personal responsibility. And here's the th deal. The moon's going to conjoin K2 uh, for the, the uncultured that's the South node. Uh, Wow. So check this out. So the moon's going to conjoin K2, moon's going to go opposite Mars and uh, Uranus, and then the moon's going to square Saturn and then trine Venus. So check this out. Let's just look at this chart. It's so fucking gnarly. This is so gnarly. Look at this. So the moon's going to go in Scorpio on, on K2, opposite Mars, Uranus, North Node. In my opinion, this is a lot of shit that you just can't control. A lot of it's out of your hands. You know, something I think a lot about is how we are all just passengers and vessels. And I, I was talking about that a couple months ago. You know, we're not in control of any of this stuff. Control is an illusion. Fate uh, is really what's at play here, especially with the astrology. And that's kind of a deeper conversation. But this moon on K2 is like a, it's, if you're going to be relishing in the pain and the agony, you're going to be exhausted and drained. And if you're going to be in the pain and the agony and you're going to be all butthurt and you want to do something about it, you're going to get instant karma, instant karma. On Friday, if you if you if you think that you are if you're angry and upset and you're like I'm gonna take action, you are gonna get fucking karma so slapped in your face so quickly. Don't do it. Find a way to let that shit go. Let it go. Real and I, I, this is I I am personally not looking forward to this day because I struggle with letting shit go. I'm not perfect with any of this stuff. This is not gonna be fun. But the moon's gonna go opposite Uranus. You're going to get triggered. You are going. It's something's gonna spur up. Something's gonna get out of your control. It's gonna destabilize. Then the moon's gonna go opposite Mars. There's nothing you can do. And then the moon's gonna square Saturn, and you feel like you're stuck in a rut, and you feel like you're on this the wrong side of the fence, and you can't do anything. The moon's though trining Venus. You have people that are support you. And I remember so going back to this PLD thing I did. We would do this thing where uh, we would have Monday meetings and during our Monday meetings, you know, we'd stand up and we'd tell people how, how we're doing on our goals and what we're going on. And people would try to serve us bullshit all the time and we wouldn't take it. And oftentimes while those people, like, let's say if you were in this PLD group and you were like, Hey, I have these goals, but you know, uh, this came up and this came up. We would be like, no, those are excuses. Why, why didn't you honor your word and honor what you want to do? And then they would throw these tantrums. But here's the thing. What can often look like, like accountability often looks like being attacked. Like, and some people conflate being attacked for just being held accountable. And I look at this moon, Scorpio, opposite Mars, squaring Saturn. It's like, if you try to serve someone your bullshit, boy, they are not going to take it. And this is Venus, this is the moon in Scorpio trying Venus and Cancer. I think these are like there are, there are people there is a situation that is incredibly supportive, but they're not going to buy your bullshit at all. It doesn't matter. You know, and excuses are excuses. Like, look, at the end of the day, and I don't care what anybody says about this. I'll fucking argue with you on this all day long cuz people love to give me like, "Well, I'm I'm X Y and Z and this is why I can't do anything." Shut up. You're you're for one, most of you are in America. In this country, when people think this is the worst country ever, there's a reason why I talked to this guy one time. I'll never forget this guy. I met him when he was working on his car in Vegas. I just asked if he needed help. And he, we went into this whole conversation. We spoke on Google Translate. He didn't speak any fucking English. This man walked from, I think, uh, Peru to America with his family to get to America. Like, do you realize how, like, again, this country sucks in a lot of ways. I'm totally on board with that. But this is still the only place where you have an opportunity to actually do shit. And people are willing to walk across the fucking world and risk their lives and their families' lives to get here just to have the opportunity. So for one, you're, if you're in America, shut the fuck up. You can do anything. Two, um, you can say excuses all day long. But there are people out there that have it 30 times worse than you. Thousands of times worse for you, worse than you and more difficult situations. And they still overcame it and they still did what they wanted to do, regardless of what they faced. 
You know, I, I for inspiration, I see like I I have my own body dysmorphia. I, I I was overweight for a long time, and I struggle with my weight. And all the time I see on Instagram, like these pictures of overweight people, like they were really, really fat and then they lost all this weight and got healthy. And it's the most fucking inspiring thing. And I see these and I'm like, if they can do it, why can't I do it? You know what I mean? And so I, I look at this as like, you're, you really got to get over your bullshit here. Really? You got to get over your limitations because if there is a day that you are going to see all of the limitations, it is on Friday. Friday, it's going to be like, you turn left, bam, you turn right, bam, you go forward, bam, you turn around, bam. You don't have anywhere to go. The only, I mean, really the only way to go is forward, but this is one of those things of like, you can't serve up your bullshit. You can't have the excuses. Yes, things are hard. Yes, it's a challenging times, but for one, challenging times make stronger people. But two, there are going to be harder times and there are going to be easier times. And I guarantee a lot of you aren't going to do the things that you want to do during the easy times. So I guarantee, I, I would recommend doing it during the hard times. So Friday, uh, Friday, it's going to be exhausting. It's, it's just not going to be a good day. At the end of the day, it's not going to be a good day. So I think what you should do is just really focus on your, rea- your response to it. How can you just be patient? Um, you know, don't react again. It, insta- karma is just waiting for you to fucking react to something on this day. Like I'm, I'm going to be challenged with this one because this like Scorpio rules my 12th house. So this is going to be hard for me. Anyway, let's talk about Saturday. Uh, moon goes into Sagittarius and squares Mercury. Um, so I typically like the moon going into Sagittarius. Cause if you've watched me for a while, I'm always like the moon and Sag, it's like, like Scorpio is like, for example, like have you ever had like, um, a lot of you, uh, my Gen Zers and millennials might be able to relate to this. Like if you had like a therapy session that was like really hardcore and you're like, I just need to get out of here so I can like live my life. Uh, the moon leaving Scorpio, like the moon and Scorpio is like a deep therapy session. And like, people are like really hounding you and this moon and Sag is like, God, get me out of there the problem with this one is the moon goes into Sagittarius and um, it immediately squares Mercury. The moon in Sag is like, God, I need this freedom. I need this excitement. The problem is, is that it's squaring Mercury in that you don't really have freedom right now. Like what I really like about this moon in Sag transit is that the sun's in Leo and the moon's in Sag. We are going to be on a sick one. We are going to be ramped up. We're going to be fired up. We're going to be very passionate. But that moon in Sag squaring Mercury is you can't just throttle out and go. You got to have a plan. You got to know where you're going. Like I'm a Sagittarius and the way that I travel is very like, let's just go. And I I just go. Like I never really like plan for stuff. Like I have like stuff in my car that will like help. But like this moon in Sag squaring Mercury in Virgo is like, you need to plan. You need to have logistics. Do you have everything in your bag? Do you have everything that you need to go on the destination that you need to go on? Because you can't just throttle out and just take off. It's not going to work this time. And especially if you take off moon squaring Mercury is like, you're going to fuck up something where it's like, if you just take off to go to hiking in the mountains, but you don't check the maps or the weather, you're going to get caught in a rainstorm or you're going to get caught in traffic and you're going to be late to where you want to go. And you're like, fuck, why didn't I check the, the traffic? Why didn't I check the weather? So moon and Sag squaring uh, Mercury will be kind of, and it's not really bad at all. Maybe a little bit frustrating, but the thing is, it's just like contain yourself have a plan, have an outline. And then after that, the moon is going to be trining the sun. I mean, that's when we get to Sunday. On Sunday, so uh, Sunday is Mars square Saturn. So we'll talk about that. Um, And Venus trines Neptune. So Sunday has its own problems. But before we talk about Sunday's problems, I want to just bring up, we're, let's ignore this for a moment. (laughs) And just think about the sun and Leo trining the moon and Sag, or the moon and Sag trining the sun and Leo, I should say. Really great opportunity to like, I mean, just fire, just be pure, be yourself and just like live and let live. That's so whack to say, but just like there's a lot of freedom on Sunday, I feel like. Or maybe not freedom, but passion is probably a better word. The reason I hesitate on freedom is Mars is square in Saturn. Um, A lot of that is going nowhere fast, to be honest with you guys. Um. Uh, if you watch Breaking Points, I don't really watch Breaking Points all the time. I, I have my criticisms of everything and everybody, but um, I do watch Breaking Points. They're like an in, independent media source. Anyway, they're talking about coverage for the midterms, and they're calling it the road to nowhere, which I love, especially because it feels like that. But this is like the road to nowhere, like Mars and Taurus square Saturn and Aquarius is like, yep, we're going nowhere very fast. Um, Mars and Taurus also, uh, also, let me also say like another prediction I have is like, more farmer protests, more meat protests are going to be happening. Uh, that's a very tor- Torian thing. 
Um, I was just reading Dorotheus last night, uh, Dorotheus of Sidon, one of like the original OG astrological texts from like 2000 years ago. And he was talking about how the eclipses in the zodiac signs will represent problems with those specific things. He was like, uh, when the eclipses are in Aries, there will be problems with sheep. And so with these uh, eclipses in Taurus, there's problems with literal cattle. And then when we get to the eclipses in Scorpio, I think of like crustaceans and bugs. And so anyway, I've said this on my delineation. Uh, they want you to stop eating meat so you can start eating bugs because climate change is your fault, not the fucking private jet people no, or, you know, the oil industry or anything. It's your fault climate's changing and you need to do stuff about it, not the government. Anyway, um, Mars is going to square Saturn. In my opinion, this is a really big, like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, more farmers shut shit down, um, to be honest with you. Because Mars and Taurus is really about being stubborn, um, really digging in your heels into the ground. And that's what a lot of this looks like. And it's squaring Saturn. I mean, like, on, on one point of this, this is, like, a lot of, like, farmers and shit really sticking it to the man, Saturn and Aquarius. Um, but again, on a personal level, like, this is, like... <sighs> You know, on one level, it's it's you've got to get out of your own way. Like Mars and Taurus squaring Saturn Christ, it's gonna be so easy to resist. And there is, and, the, and for a lot of you, maybe resisting is the thing that you need to do. But for a lot of other people, this is also like you need to like just go anyway. Well, this is the other thing. Saturn and Aquarius squaring Mars and Taurus is a lot of like, you know, the governments and the authorities are gonna be like, farmers need to stop uh producing cattle because uh Climate change, uh, even though there's a fucking food shortage and literally hundreds of millions of people will literally starve. Um, but yeah, climate change. We have to change. Uh, we have to get rid of uh, meat for that. A lot of people are just not going to listen to the rules. And that's what I like Mar about Mars and Taurus squaring Saturn and Aquarius. It's like, uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to listen to that. Like Mars and Taurus is very like not getting off the couch. Um, and I look at that with squaring Saturn and Aquarius. It's like, I'm not going to do what the authority tells me to do. Right. Maybe that's a lot of the Mars Uranus North Node thing too. But Mars squaring Saturn is like, for one, I think a lot of you need to resist a lot of like, um, I don't want to say resist stubbornness, but like r resist falling back, resist fear. Uh, Mars and Taurus squaring Saturn Aquarius is no matter what you do, no matter what you do, like literally there are going to be walls and blocks that try to stop you. In my opinion just keep going. Don't fucking listen to them. Like, in fact, um, <laughs> this is, a, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm still trying to do this astrology meetup thing. Denver city wouldn't give me the permit for the park. I'm thinking about just doing an event there anyway and fucking saying, you know, fuck you guys. Uh, I, this is a fucking park. We're going to hang out. If you, you don't want to give me a permit, fuck off. Um, I'll deal with the consequences later. So that's still trying to be a thing. I'm looking at September Sunday, the 4th of September, uh, like the morning till the afternoon. So write that in your calendars. If you're in the area, come hang out with us. I'm still trying to do that, but I'm working on the permits. And if I can't get the permits, I'm going to do it anyway. So I don't give a fuck. Um, as you could tell, I have Saturn uh, on in Aries on K2. And I just, I stopped listening to authorities because they treat me like shit. So anyway, Mars is going to be in Taurus, squaring Saturn Aquarius. A lot of you are just, it's it's going to be slow. That's the other thing. Like it's a lot of slow movement here. You don't need to be, racing to the finish line like slow and steady wins the race but this is like hey this is a this is another breakthrough opportunity because saturn and aquarius is going to stop you like mars and taurus is like i'm just going to keep doing my thing saturn and aquarius is going to be like that's not saturn and aquarius is very like well that's you know you don't want to be a well for example like with the saturn and aquarius and the vaccinated things like well you don't want to be an anti-vaxxer do you and you know they threaten you with words that mean nothing anymore and it's one of those things of like are you just gonna like are you going to be afraid to challenge what everyone else is doing or are you just going to be a stubborn asshole and do whatever you want? I think you should be a stubborn asshole and do whatever you want. I, I respect more people that do that than be like, oh, well, I guess I, I don't want people to not like me. <laughs> so on Sunday, a lot of, well, the other thing, let me also say this too, because I want to make sure I say this. A lot of Sunday is just feeling the resistance. Like you are going to feel the resistance. You are going to feel the pressure. <laughs> excuse me, you are going to feel the slowdown. It is going to feel very hard. It's going to feel like you're in a rut and that you need to get out. You just got to keep going. You just got to keep pushing one day at a time, one moment at a time. It's it's going to be hard, but you like, you, it, this, again, again, this is why I said, this is just a hard week, okay? So just, you know, by the time you get to Sunday, by the time you get to Sunday, it doesn't get any better. By the time you get to Sunday, you're going to be so exhausted from that moon and Scorpio transit that you're just going to be like, fuck. I just want to stop. I think the challenge here, though, is don't stop. Don't just stop. Keep going. 
Mars will go into Gemini eventually and you'll be able to do, you know, more things. But anyway, uh, oh, let's talk about next week. Is it this button? Oh, it is this button. Okay. Um, the comments you guys left about the button pushing was really funny. I read those. Next week, Venus goes opposite Pluto. So, you know, what's funny is I went to Aspen for my birthday. And during the, when I went there, there was like the Aspen Security Council meeting. I had no idea that was going on at the time. But that's pretty much where all the fucking CIA, DOJ, FBI people come together and they have a circle jerk about, you know, them controlling the world and what they're going to do. Um, it was really funny that that happened when the sun was opposite Pluto. And I don't know if you've seen some of the the the, the videos of the, the Aspen Security Council meeting, um, but that was when the sun was opposite Pluto, which is so perfect. So perfect. Anyway, Venus is going to go opposite Pluto. Then Venus is going to get into Leo, and then it's hot girl summer because Venus will eventually try and Jupiter and shit. Like Venus and Leo, a lot of you got to like really say it with your chest and just like don't like don't be afraid to be like hot. Like don't be afraid like to wear like something sexy, right? Then we have the full moon in Aquarius. Pick your side. Pick your side. Full moon in Aquarius. Uh, this country has a history of riots happening on the full moon in Aquarius. Social security was started with the full moon in Aquarius, so social security might come up later on. Uh, the race riots in the 60s was the full moon in Aquarius. The, uh, I can go on all day about the full moon in Aquarius. It's on Saturn. This is going to be rough. This is going to be like a, it is us and it is them. It is, um, and that's how things are right now. Because again, that's what they want. They want you to hate everybody and to hate your neighbor and to divide society because then they can control us. So I, I try not to placate into that, even though I do get, I, I do become a victim of that every now and then, but I do try to go out of my way and do try to be my best to like, be inclusive of everybody, but it is hard. It's none of this shit is easy. I'm not like, why aren't you doing something that is incredibly hard easily? Sun goes opposite Saturn. That's going to be really real. And then Mars shines Pluto, which is kind of weird because it's like Mars and Taurus shining Pluto. There's like power and like being stubborn. <laughs> anyway, that's what I got for you guys. Uh, my final thoughts are, I mean, this is a hard week. This is a hard week. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be easy, but there are breakthrough opportunities if you allow yourself to break through to the other side. If you don't break through, you're not going to have a good time. If you do break through, you're still maybe not going to have a good time, but at least you're doing the thing that you know you need to do. So, um, God, I mean, the other final thoughts are just kind of uh, go slow, go steady, do what you can. I think with Mars squaring Saturn too, it's just you, you know what pace that you need to go at. Um. I really think that's it. I kind of went over everything I really wanted to. So with that being said, I really love and appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me. Make sure you like this video. It really helps me out. Comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. That helps me out too. Thank you for the comments for the algorithm. Just comment. Just key smash for the algorithm. Um, head over to my Patreon. We're now on Discord. I offer so many goodies there. Uh, did I say Patreon? Yeah, I said Patreon. I almost said head over to my Discord. We have Discord there. Um, book a reading with me if you want to uh, talk about your chart and what's coming up for you in the next year. Um, I love talking to you guys. All my clients are absolutely phenomenal. Um, but anyway, guess I'll leave you guys with that and I will be seeing you next week.